Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit. Our guest today is Irakli Buridzi. Welcome. Irakli is the head of the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics at Unicree. Thank you, Gillian. I'm very happy to be with you today. Delighted to, that you're here. First of all, tell me a little bit about the work that you're doing. Right, thanks a lot. I'm a head of the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics for Unicree. Unicree is a United Nations agency which helps countries, UN member states, to articulate their uh, policies related to the issues of crime, crime prevention, criminal justice, rule of law, human rights. And our center is helping member states to understand how, on the one hand, criminals can use artificial intelligence, how to prevent that, and how, at the same time, law enforcement agencies can use artificial intelligence to solve crime-related problems, but to do that in a responsible, ethical, and human rights compliant manner. So we're running uh, many different projects, practical projects, we facilitate the AI technology for the use and to solve uh, issues and problems. At the same time, we're supporting uh, UN member states to actually come up with uh, regulations, governance instruments and mechanisms, and uh, provide them with those solutions. Can you give me some examples of those solutions? Sure. Uh, uh, last month, together with Interpol, we issued a toolkit. It's a practical uh, governance instrument for the responsible use of AI by law enforcement. Use of AI by law enforcement is uh, one of the most sensitive applications of artificial intelligence, but at the same time, most of the law enforcement agencies are experimenting how to use AI to solve crime-related problems, and they are very much interested to do so in a responsible, ethical, and human rights compliant manner. Therefore, together with Interpol, we started to actually create such a guidebook such a governance instrument for them. European Commission supported this initiative and it was a multi-stakeholder initiative which ran for several years. We involved private sector, academia, civil society and uh, many other stakeholders, obviously law enforcement, to develop that guidelines. And uh, last month, at the science conference of the Interpol together and in the presence of the Secretary General of Interpol, we unveiled and released the first version of such a toolkit. It's a very practical guidebook. It's been now tested in 15 countries and we are receiving very good feedback. Uh, we're going to improve the toolkit and by end of the year, uh, there will be a next version of the toolkit released for all UN member states. How do you ensure that this is adopted internationally though? So what we are doing is a second uh, phase of the initiative is that we're going to help countries to translate this toolkit because Toolkit is a general one developed for all countries in the world to translate it into their national, uh, into their national practices, into the standard operational procedures of theirs as well. And it's going to be a quite a uh, massive uh, undertaking from the UN and Interpol side and from our center. So we're going to provide trainings, workshops, and practical engagements with the countries to help them to adopt it, implement it, and obviously translate it into their national practices. Okay, tell me some more about the, uh, the examples that you, are, um, that, that you have and you use around the AI for good. So uh, just now, a couple of uh, hours ago, actually, I presented at the stage uh, our AI for Safer Children initiative. And this is one of our flagship projects, and I'm very proud of that. This is a partnership uh, uh, between our center and the Ministry of Interior of United Arab Emirates. And uh, I'm very grateful and thankful for the support of the UAE and UAE government for this initiative. It's an initiative which we started two years ago. We launched it at the World Economic Forum uh, in Davos and it envisages two major things. One is to raise awareness how artificial intelligence tools can support combating sexual exploitation and abuse of children. And second one, probably even more important, to build a global hub of all AI tools available in the world, which is developed for that purpose, and to train and give access to the UN member states to use these tools. Last uh, year, this time, we launched the Global Hub, and we're very proud that right now, more than 90 countries have access to the Global Hub. We have over 350 officers already using it, 
And in the hub, we have over 70 AI tools available for all countries in the world to use it. And another thing which we are very proud of, and uh, we have a very close cooperation with the technology providers who are developing these tools, so we're facilitating that, that we have a pledge from, from the technology providers that any country in the world which needs the tool for a specific use case can use any tool for free under the UN umbrella so that uh, they don't need to pay for it if they cannot afford it. So we actually lower the barrier of access to the technology for any country in the world. And that really contributes to the ideas of democratization of the artificial intelligence tools and uh, some, somehow contributing into in, in ensuring that this widening gap of the digital um, the divide which is happening in the world uh, can be sort of uh, stopped and, and, and uh, contributed into that. How has that been received? Oh, it's been received very well. Uh, as I said it uh, last year, we launched the Global Hub and uh, now we have over 90 countries accessing to it. We are processing applications on a daily basis, so the country memberships are growing and uh, I'm very proud that it's been recognized one of the top UN initiatives for AI for good. So uh, in this summit that has uh, this example was uh, again very well received. Uh, we had a quite a wider discussion and many partners and stakeholders are interested to support it and make it sort of a more global than it is now. I understand. And we've seen AI develop uh, at a huge rate, in particular in the last year. Where do you see what you're doing in the next, say, mid to, to, to long term? So AI has developed a lot, and I've been on the AI for Good Summit since its inception, and every single one of them and our conversations have become more and more advanced. Right now, we're talking about concrete ways how to govern artificial intelligence, what are the governance structures, instruments, and formulas could be used in the future. So if you, in the future, we will have a quite in-depth and urgent conversations about governance of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence can certainly uh, solve a lot of problems, can contribute into the development, into the uh, solutions to the UN Sustainable Development Goals and many other things, but at the same time it can cause problems and these problems can be of very serious nature. That's why it is very much necessary to have those governance structures in place, so to ensure the technology benefits and the risks are mitigated. Sure, and you talked about those problems. What are the general challenges for you around AI? So there are many, many challenges, of course, around AI, and AI can be used in our work, for example, by criminals, terrorist groups, and others as well. And, uh, and this is a very powerful technology. So we do need to be ensuring that uh, people who are, who are uh, working to prevent uh, the use of technology, for example, by criminals, are fully aware of, and they know what are, uh, what are the dangers. So our center has, over the years now, issued a number of reports related to that, re related how criminals can use artificial intelligence, and we have provided trainings and information to the agencies, including law enforcement agencies, intelligence agencies, how to actually counter that and how to build knowledge and understanding of, uh, of these technologies. At the same time, of course, uh, is, uh, as uh, powerful as this technology is, it can uh, take away some jobs and it can, uh, of course, take away some entire job categories as well. So therefore, we should be very much aware of that and uh, see how can countries prepare themselves to counter that. So we have at the moment over 60 or so countries who have adopted national strategies and they identified AI as a priority in it and uh, they are actually working very hard. From the UN perspective and from my personal perspective, what I would like to see is that all countries in the world adopting AI national strategies so that they all invest in understanding of this technology so that AI benefits everyone in the world and not selected few so that we are not ending up in a world where only selected few are benefiting of it. Okay, and you spoke about it in your uh, conference this morning, but also uh, in just now, Unicri is working on ensuring the law enforcement can use AI. Um, how do you do that in a, in a compliant way? So this is, uh, again, very, very important to ensure that AI is used in a responsible, ethical and human rights compliant uh, manner. And we are offering different solutions to that. Obviously, there are other international mechanisms who are also offering uh, uh, solutions. From our perspective, uh, as I said it, we developed a specialized guidebook for the law enforcement agencies, which is designed for all 193 UN member states on 
responsible use of AI by law enforcement. So this is a comprehensive guidebook, over 150 pages. It, in, it includes checklists, it includes practical advice, it's practical guidance as well. And it offers them an opportunity if all of it is implemented, is that on the one hand, AI is used to solve crime-related problems because as I always underline that law enforcement agencies need AI to solve problems. Without AI right now, it is actually quite, it, it's, it's not really feasible how would any law enforcement agency in an adequate way be able to tackle growing problems. Law enforcement agencies or anyone else is collecting enormous amount of data and someone needs to analyze that data and make sense of it. And if we don't have applications and tools like AI tools for individuals or groups of individuals, it would take forever to uh, analyze and come up with adequate uh, analysis of any data in the world. Therefore, you do need the AI solutions to it, but at the same time, you need to use that in a responsible, ethical, human rights compliant manner. And that's sort of a, a challenge and the balance which we would need to be keeping in the uh, coming years. Okay. Fascinating. Irakli Baridzi, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Gillian. Wonderful to be with you. Thank you. And more to come on the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva. <laughs>